Hello, today we'll be talking more about our robotic biped chassis. You may have seen in a previous video how we evolved the motion of walking using the microbial algorithm to evolve the process of the, the walking. So it would come up with different angles and what it should turn in a different order and test it out. In this video, we're talking about the step on from that project where we didn't just evolve a series of steps but evolved a neural network. Using this idea of reinforcement learning, which is greatly covered in the OpenAI organization set up by Elon Musk, where they've managed to get different agents learning different behaviors. For example, they used a hide and seek um, algorithm where the hiders and the seekers would keep evolving to find each other and hide from each other and getting more and more successful and then using tools to hide from one another. And this idea is done through reinforcement learning because you can't just evolve a series of steps and then that's it. Neural networks allow an agent to act a lot more intelligently and also to different inputs. So walking, you could walk on a flat surface, you could then walk on a rough surface, walk on an outdoor surface, and it will all be different. So there's no one way of walking it. But how do you have a neural network which could take an input of the texture of the ground and learn what's best to walk on different areas, then you could really start getting into something intelligent, um, such as the flappy bird, where they've used a reinforcement learning method where a neural network would allow the flappy bird to, at the first like 50 generations, it would just keep hitting into things. But then it would start to learn if it goes through the hoops, it will get better and better. And its inputs would obviously be what's in front of it. So. We use this idea with the robot where a neural network was set up with a series of different architectures. So there was one with one layer and five nodes, there's another with one layer, 10 nodes, and another with one layer and 15 nodes. Then finally, a perceptron. We measured how the different uh, network architectures would affect the uh, robot chassis and the way it moves. Um, and after plotting this data and doing three trials of each architecture, we found that the five node network worked the best um, and was considerably better than a perceptron, which obviously wasn't finding the, the roots and being able to develop these roots in the network to accurately predict the next uh, steps. Um, the hardware remains completely the same as the previous robot, where it will uh, have the Raspberry Pi and um, a series of ha uh, hats connected to an ultrasonic range sensor, gyroscope, and obviously the servos. We used simply a small battery of about 3.7 volts and measured out to make sure it had um, enough uh, current. So we needed 2000 mega amps of current for the four different servos, each running about 500 mega amps each. And this battery had provided 3350 mega amps. So that was plenty. We defined fitness by the getting the start distance and then at the end getting the end distance. By doing some subtraction, we were able to find how far it actually advanced, and then we would penalize it if it wasn't enough diversity in movement. So what happened is, um, without this, the robot would make a step, just it would start, move up, and it would wait till the last minute and then jump. And obviously we want to evolve a more movement um, genotype. So we penalized any genotypes which didn't allow a lot of diverse movement. Um, and we also penalized it if it was to um, fall over. So if it falls over, it gets uh, zero fitness. And if it was just slightly off angle at the end or something, and it hasn't really made a good step, then um, we would penalize by a certain degree uh, based on the angle. Um, the mutation was just simply using a 10% standard deviation and just over the entire genotype, um, changing values and making sure that the values remain in the bounds of minus four and four so uh, we prevent the weights and biases getting too big or too small and that means that the network will um, find it harder to evolve this behavior so observations through the experiment we found that quite often one side of the biped would evolve the walking motion but not the other side so it would evolve this complex step on one side and then last minute just push together so although it was taking steps, it was only on one half. Um, we have ideas to go about solving this, such as using some sort of mirrored genetic algorithm in order to um, copy one side over to the other as another 
gene in the population to um, evolve, hopefully, both sides. To conclude this experiment, we found that the reinforcement learning method uh, provided higher fitnesses and a more effective walking strategy than a standard genetic algorithm. And within the reinforcement learning, using a neural network of one layer and five nodes seemed to be the best approach for the problem of four different servo motors.